you have to be kind of brave to be in food. You know, there's a lot of like knives and fire and you have to be willing to just like jump in and try stuff. Which is exactly why I have not historically been good at cooking. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lonnie. I'm a professional baker, and in this box are all the ingredients for a batch of $118 brownies. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a home cook, and in this box are my $14 brownie ingredients. Okay, okay. This is exciting and intimidating. I don't know what you do with this. So, welcome to my kitchen. It's a lot of brown cabinet. In my recipe, I was planning on making some brown buttered and candy pecan brownies with some chocolate creme chanty. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. My favorite brand of unsweetened chocolate. I'm looking forward to being brownies. Ah. Some European butter for browning. I had organic pasture raised eggs. 12 eggs, large grade A. That's the grade I like my eggs. Very high quality vanilla extract. I always wondered what the good vanilla extract tasted like and now I'm gonna find out. Super fine sugar. My go-to gluten-free baking flour. Dried milk powder. <laughs> I have never used this in my life. And of course, plenty of pecans for candy. Fancy pecans. They, I mean, they, they say that they're fancy, but I mean, and I also believe that they're fancy. Light brown sugar, ground cardamom. And everything I needed to make a lovely creme chanty. Powdered sugar, heavy whipping cream, bittersweet chocolate, baking wafers. Is that how you'd say it in French? Gary Guitard? Some more vanilla and a little bit of fresh mint. It was gonna be great. With Emily's recipe, I've got some simpler ingredients. We've got unsalted butter, canola oil, powdered sugar, white granulated sugar, eggs, vanilla extract, all-purpose flour, unsweetened cocoa powder, chopped walnuts, and heavy cream. You know, these ingredients are simpler, but I've got some ideas. We're gonna make them better. If I had to guess, all these ingredients, batch of brownies, I'd say 20 bucks. It's 14. $14. I have champagne taste. I would say all of these ingredients cost $116. What? I am looking at Lani's recipe. It does not have quantities or instructions. Oh yeah, this will be fine. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> Gluten-free baking flour I have not used before, but it does say one for one baking. So I'm hoping it's pretty similar to flour. I actually think that gluten-free baking is way easier, especially for the novice baker. It's so much more forgiving. You don't need to worry about overworking your gluten. So I have not per se browned butter before, or at least not intentionally and successfully. Brown butter is like, a little bit dangerous. It's kind of the bad boy of the kitchen. Chocolate creme chantilly. I think that's like a, a whipped cream kind of type thing, but different. So creme chantilly is actually just a fancy French name for sweetened whipped cream. It's what you think of when you think of whipped cream. I, uh, I'm definitely gonna have some questions for Rose on this one. Rose! Hi! <laughs> Hello, Emily, how are you? Oh boy, Rose. <laughs> the title of the recipe yeah. is browned butter and ca candied pecan brownies. So, I know conceptually what browned butter is, but like, how does that play into making brownies? First of all, you're melting the butter, so you're adding a liquid fat and not a solid fat. It's going to give a nutty quality to it. It's a way more complex flavor profile than just regular butter, which let's face it, is really pretty tasty too. Candied pecans oh. with cardamom. Oh, delicious. Um, sounds great, right? <laughs> You're gonna take sugar, maybe a little bit of water and melt it. So you're going to heat it and make sure it's nice and melted. You can add your cardamom, which adds that really nice, almost florally kind of note. Cook them there for a couple minutes, dump them on a sheet tray that's either 
sprayed or lined with parchment paper and cool them and you're good to go. Chocolate creme chantilly, basically like whipped cream. Exactly. But hear me out, this one's okay. chocolate. You're gonna wanna melt some of the chocolate with some of the cream so that everything melts and blends together. Add the rest of the cream and then chill it way down before you, you whisk it. Once you go to whip it, look for soft peaks and you're going to want to start to add a little bit of powdered sugar, just a tablespoon or so at a time. Last question, what would you guess all of the amounts should be? <laughs> the measurements is really hard, so how about if I think about it and text you a little bit later <laughs> with what that I think. Would be great. Remember, at the end you're going to end up with a brownie, so it's going to be all delicious. What if I don't? What if I make something else like a muffin by accident? If it's a muffin, it'll be a chocolate muffin. So how bad can oh, that be? Nice. That's a good point. <laughs> Am I confident I can do this? No, but I'm going to try anyway. So to start this off, in her recipe, Emily's just adding the eggs into the batter. All I want to do is pull those egg whites out. I'm going to whip them up into a meringue. We're still going to get a lovely, dense, fudgy brownie, but we're going to be able to pull in a little bit more moisture. It's just going to elevate the whole experience of the brownie. So Emily has us using two eggs. I'm going to throw in the yolk from this one. Bulk out that like fat, delicious, chewy, fudgy side of this brownie. These eggs have been sitting out at room temperature for a couple of hours now. When they're warm, they do all the things that I want them to do. The yolk's gonna wanna separate from the white, the shells are gonna separate from each other and from the egg inside. Before I head over to the stove, I'm going to do my browned butter prep. Pull out, which I knew was all one. It's like a wedding veil, you know? Like, I feel like I'm getting married again. And then check to make sure that that fits in my sieve. Yeah. It fits. The next thing I'm doing is cubing my butter. I'm gonna throw this butter into my handy dandy saucepan, which I will pop it in and then take her to the stove top. Emily wants me to whip some cream. Brownies and whipped cream, classic combo, delicious. I've got a better idea. Potatoes, hear me out. They're mostly starch, which is mostly sugar, and you're gonna get some earthy caramely notes if you take these potatoes, peel the skins, bang them in a pan with some ground butter, let them really caramelize. We're gonna deglaze it essentially with this cream. And deglazing basically just means adding a liquid and kind of picking up all those delicious flavors and bits at the bottom of the pan. The next thing I'm going to do is just prep my chocolate for my chocolate creme chantilly. Six ounces of chocolate, which is half this bag. Yeah, I'd say that's about half. Chop up this chocolate. And I think we're ready to move on. Mm, chocolate fingers. Now we are setting up for my candied pecans. So the first thing I have to do is line this baking tray with parchment paper. Oh, oh no. Well, how much room can a cup of pecans really take up? I guess this is trash now. <laughs> one to one pecans to sugar. I wonder what the difference is between light and dark brown sugar. I have so much to talk to Rose about. Rose, why is the sky blue? Why are birds so cool? We're going for a teaspoon of cardamom, and then I've got half a teaspoon of salt. So Emily gave me some walnuts for these brownies, and walnuts are great in brownies, but they're even better when you toast them up. Low, medium heat, between gas mark three and four, and <laughs> They really just go in the pan. For 10 minutes, 12 minutes, something like that. Walnuts are fine, they're a tasty nut, they're readily available in most grocery stores. I prefer pecans. Is it pecans? Is it pecans? I feel like when you say candied pecan, that sounds weirder than candied pecan. Feels better to call it a pecan. So call it a rabbit for all I care. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on to medium and I'm gonna add everything except the pecans into there. What? <laughs> Cool. and stir it up and then hope that it turns into something I can use to candy a pecan. This is a new experience for me that I am following Rose's expertise. I've got my trusty little monkey mitt. I'm just gonna give these a little toss. They do smell toasty and you can see there's a lot of golden brown happening. There's actually a little bit of black right here. So I'm actually just gonna take that one out so it doesn't poison the well. But these are pretty much done. All right, pecans going in. I'm just gonna give this a stir. Let's go to the parchment paper. That is some hot sugar. This 
is what our candied pecans are looking like. Looks good, smells good, can't wait to eat. But not yet, because hot sugar is very hot. Let's get these potato skins caramelized. Heavy bottom pot, low to medium heat. This is about half a stick of butter, straight into the bottom of the pan. They really can just go straight in. You really want to develop the flavor lowly and slowly. We're gonna think maybe it's done, but it's not gonna be. We're gonna let it go some more. We think it might be done then, it's not gonna be. We're gonna let it go some more. A bunch of salt here should really do the trick. Probably 20 minutes. Like you can take a look, you can see everything's really nice and deep and golden. There's plenty of really beautiful golden caramelized bits of potato all on the bottom of this pan. So we're gonna take some of this cream. I'm just gonna go all around this pan. That heat is just gonna pull out and extract all of those beautiful flavors and it'll sit in the fridge overnight. Emily's not even gonna know what hit her. I'm just melting some butter to hopefully start to brown it. Just keeping it on a nice medium low. When this starts to foam, I will add my cup of powdered milk. Uh, milk powder, yeah. That's what I said. Just add it after it's foaming. Mix it for a few minutes, but watch it. Make sure that it doesn't scorch or burn. You know what they say, a watched pot of butter never froths. Ah, looks like it's foaming, so it is time to toss in our full cream milk powder. Believe in yourself, Emily. Oh, was I not supposed to put it all in at once? Ah, it's just brownies, Emily, it's just brownies. If it goes horribly, a couple million people will know about it. I think that it is starting to brown, and now I'm putting it over the sieve. And hopefully that will separate out the milk solids from the liquid bits. Yeah, it looks right. Hey, I browned some butter. Huh? <laughs> so whenever you're making a meringue, the most important thing is that your mixing bowl and your whisk attachment is scrupulously clean. I like to just give it a little wipe down, even if it's just come out of the dishwasher. We're just gonna add these nice room temperature whites. They've been tempering for a while now. I'm just gonna add these to the bowl. The recipe calls for a cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna make this meringue by stealing away a third of a cup of sugar here. Isn't gonna make a difference to the overall recipe. Turn it on. Woo. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Plug in your mixer with your beautiful pink extension cord. Just adding in, little by little. And as I wanna give that sugar an opportunity to sort of dissolve into those egg whites. Let's take a look. Probably quadrupled the volume of what's in this bowl. And really, I can test. Look, that's not going anywhere. So we're good. I just add a little pinch of salt. I literally just pinch it. Like I'm trying to pinch somebody's love handle. And I just give it a little, and then I take my whip, and I'll just kind of give it a whip by hand. So the next thing I'm gonna do, melt my chocolate for the creme chantilly, chantilly. And I'm looking forward to doing my best to not F this up. I am putting my saucepan over low heat. I'm going to just toss everything in there and hope for the best. All right, so we have chocolate, cream, Salt and one tablespoon of vanilla. <laughs> Fancy vanilla smells excellent. I think that my chocolate is already looking pretty good. It's like shiny, shiny. Well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to start our batter. The very first thing we're going to do is melt some chocolate. I have my nine chocolate bars. Like even the paper is like of fine quality. Ooh, it is getting steamy in this kitchen. It's uh, probably hot because I have boiling water behind me to make my double boiler uh, or bowl in pot. Is now in my bowl. What you're seeing here is these are my brown butter solids. And then this down below is my brown butter liquid. And I'm gonna add this to the chocolate and then put it over my double boiler. Chocolate covered in liquefied butter. It's exactly what you would think that looks like. Emily's given me this recipe and I'm gonna stay in the same neighborhood, but I'm actually gonna use my experience to kind of 
do a little riff. So when I add these guys, the sugar, the fat into this bowl, that's the point at which actually I'm gonna add my vanilla and I'm gonna add my salt. I really wanna make sure that the salt and the vanilla are completely incorporated just at a like, different time in a little bit of a different way. And I get the remaining two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. I like how she's included confectioner's sugar in this. The confectioner's sugar is really gonna add some delicious denseness and like fudginess to our brownie. This is gonna be a whole full cup of powdered sugar. A stick of butter melted. I've kept this little piece of paper from this stick of butter. You can actually take this little piece of paper and if you had your pan, just sort of lay it in the bottom of your pan and that acts like a pre-greased piece of parchment. You're really reutilizing everything that you have around. You're not wasting extra parchment. So the last thing we're adding is just a tablespoon of canola oil. So the vanilla and the salt are the two things that are really gonna boost and amplify the flavor of these brownies. I'm probably gonna boost this double, maybe even triple. She's got a half a teaspoon of salt in here. I'd say a few generous pinches to be honest. I'm gonna add these egg yolks. Now remember, I've added an extra egg yolk in there. Let them break up a bit before I add the next one. Fabulous. This is what this should look like. This looks good. The Epicurious staff has informed me that this baby here is a professional series mixer. It belongs to me, so who is the professional and who is the novice now? Hmm? I have pasture-raised organic eggs at room temperature because that's what Lonnie said to do and I listen to professionals when they talk to me. I'm using 10 eggs. It has come to my attention that I am making enough brownies to feed all of us. So if you want a brownie, my number is. <laughs> I wonder if this KitchenAid was disappointed when it met me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, oh right, because I can just, it doesn't matter. Add in three cups of sugar, salt, and last thing is a quarter cup of vanilla. Uh, this looks mixed. I think it is time for me to add in my melted chocolate and butter combo. Ooh, man, this is so much brownie batter. I would describe that as combined. Here are my brown butter solids. I'm just gonna pop them in here, I guess. Wow, they do smell, Woo! That's okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Everything's fine. That was apparently very crumbly. Now we both know that. Woo! Woo! <laughs> my hands are slippery. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna do is take my candied pecans and just kind of break them up and drop them in here. I'm gonna set a few of these aside to put on top. Oh, these are very sticky. I don't know if we were going for more of a crunch or a chew, but we definitely got chew. This might not be exactly how Lonnie would have done it, but hey, it's done. Before we put our flour and our cocoa powder into our batter, what we actually wanna do is sift those things together. We're gonna utilize our sieve again. We're gonna use this parchment on our worktop and, oh, AP flour. I am a gluten-free baker. I'm a gluten-free person. I don't use AP. I'll show you what I use. Trusty gluten-free flour mix. I really do keep this in my cupboard. She asks for a half a cup, so into the sieve. I also need the cocoa. A little extra never really hurt anybody. Everything's sort of already mixing together. It's sitting in a nice fluffy little mound on this parchment paper. Actually just turn this machine on low and put it all right in. Everything's looking nice and smooth, ni nice and glossy and chocolatey. Next thing I wanna do is incorporate the meringue. So there's a ton of fat in here. Fat is the enemy of meringue and the thing that I wanna do to retain the most beautiful foamy texture that I can is take a nice scoop of this meringue. Just sort of using the flat of my blade up and around the side of the bowl to sort of lift this batter and allow it to fall onto itself and using the weight of itself to incorporate it. I'm gonna add my toasted walnuts. It's looking pretty good. You can see that the walnut lumps in there are pretty evenly distributed, and this looks like a really great brownie batter. Drop my flour in there, which definitely didn't get any milk solids in it in that explosion, if that's what you're thinking. 
I'm gonna turn this on low so it doesn't explode. Oh. Nope, too high. That looks good. Emily's recipe says to grease the pan with butter, line it with parchment paper, but I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna use this parchment paper. Instead of putting it in the pan, we're gonna protect our work surface. The butter and the flour are basically gonna be the only things keeping your brownies from sticking to the bottom of this pan. Get a little knob and just kinda use this paper towel to work all this butter into this pan. You can really see that everything is nice and evenly coated. You've already got tons of cocoa powder in your brownie. You might as well put some on the outside to keep your brownies from sticking to your pan. Give it a little shake through and it's all just kind of sitting in a little mound right here. Give it a good shake. All this cocoa powder is going to evenly coat the bottom of this pan. So I can see that it's basically corner to corner, edge to edge. And now all we need to do gather our edges bring our Hershey's back over to us and voila we got butter we got cocoa powder it's ready to go my brownie batter is ready to go and I have a baking tray here that has been oiled and foiled so to speak and I think I'm ready to put this batter into here and bake it oh yeah get on there go 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 what I like to do to get the batter out of the bowl is take the tip of my spatula and I'm actually just gonna start poking at the top of this brownie batter, creating a nice little brownie batter avalanche. Try to get it even across the whole pan. Let's put these suckers in the oven. So I've got my oven at 325 and I think I'm gonna listen to Rose and go for like a 40, 45 minute situation. And I'll, I'll check it at like 35, 40 minutes just to See how it's doing. I'm just gonna give it one kind of final shake that way because I've got a square that way. And then I'm just gonna stud this with some toasted walnuts. I just like to take them and break them in my hands, working to just sort of scatter them evenly. So I get different textural experiences every time I take a bite of my brownie. And then that's pretty much it. My oven's been preheating to 350. We'll see what they look like in just a little bit. All right, brownies look ready, mitts are on. Let's get those brownies out of the oven. Got them. Check these puppies out. Uh, they smell really good. Like it smells like I know what I'm doing, you know? I don't, but it smells like I do. So here are my brownies. You can see they've got lovely crispy edges. So now that they're done, we're just gonna let them cool. I've got my caramelized potato cream. It's been chilling in the fridge with all those lovely potato skins all nice and caramely in there so it's full of flavor. And I've got a vanilla bean. They're full of beautiful little vanilla seeds that are gonna go right into this cream and it's really, really gonna elevate the flavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is strain this caramelized potato cream. You really wanna make sure you get all these bits every last skin out of this dish. Next thing I'm gonna do, vanilla bean. You can't fully see them on camera, but there's thousands and thousands of little teeny tiny black vanilla seeds in here. These are just kind of gonna deposit, right? Like some little kids learning to swim on the side of the pool. Give it a little swirl and we're gonna get it on the mixer. Pinch of salt brings out all the beautiful flavor. And when we whip this, we've got our little bit of sugar here that we're just gonna use to sweeten this cream up. Take a little bit in there. It's gonna be at soft peak stage in just a few moments. I don't need to rush anything. From the fridge, I am bringing out my creme chantilly. I added some cream off camera, I know, and I've been chilling it while we've been doing the rest of this. And next step, we're just going to start whipping it while adding some powdered sugar to make it into like more of a whipped creamy kind of situation. I would describe this as maybe not stiff, but like in that range. All right, so whipped cream is done and ready to be on a brownie. The whipped cream is whipped. The brownies are here. I think we're ready to plate. I'm typically a middle brownie person, but I'm gonna start with a corner because that just seems like the right way to do it. Okay, and I've got, oh, nope. Removing corner of tinfoil. Good enough. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is grab a dollop of chocolate creme chanty. We'll just get that on there. Wow, they are almost the same color. I'm gonna choose a couple nice pecans here and just grab a sprig of mint. Ah, okay, perfect, done. Ha ha, this is my take on Lonnie's recipe. I really hope she thinks I did fine. At least fine. I've picked a really colorful plate that's not gonna distract from the overall look of my dessert. Ooh, beautiful edge piece, yes please. Really gorgeous corner here. Ooh, she's gooey. So she's gonna come up and over, right to the center of my plate. I just love like an artful dollop, about the size of like mm, a ping pong ball. And I'm kind of gonna just go bloop and let gravity do its thing as well. And I'm gonna take some of these walnuts that I've reserved off to the side, use my hands to sort of break them up and sprinkle them over the top. And that's it. I think that's ready to eat. It looks beautiful. I can smell it's delicious. It really pops on this beautiful blue plate. This looks incredible. It looks super like deluxe. Like as brownies go, this is way over the top. Oh, I got all this crusty bit. I got, oh, nice edge piece. Oh my God. Oh, she gooey. Mm. Listen, it's rich, it's chocolatey. There's so much depth, so much flavor. We've got the toasty walnuts. We've got the creamy caramelized cream with all the vanilla in there. Emily, I hope yours tastes as good as mine. Like, nobody talk to me. Don't look at me, don't talk to me. Don't look at me, don't talk to me. I'm good. <sighs> That's really good. The milk solids and brown butter are really incredible. They really do add something great. And the pecans are like delicious, so you really can't go wrong here. This is like, this is great. What a great brownie. My guess is that probably Lonnie does these a lot better, but, but I, I think it turned out pretty great. Obviously, I'm still eating it. Hi, Hi Lonnie! Hey, Lonnie, it's nice to meet you. It's so <laughs> nice to meet you. This was so much fun. But I think it turned out well. So, okay, so you're gonna make brown butter everything from now on. Yeah, and those granules are so tasty and they smell so good. You're basically like a Michelin starred chef now. Um, okay, cool, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see it? Yes. Oh! Yeah. Yes, get in there. I'll get into it. Yes, it, it looks great. Right. Amazing. Do you want to see yours? Yes, of course. Oh my gosh, da, 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 that is gorgeous. Da, da. She's very perky. She looks good. She's, <laughs> she looks great. Uh, I like desperately want to take another bite of this brownie. You should, I'm going to take another <laughs> bite too. I think that will be like the perfect sign off. Just like a yeah. bite and like a wave of a fork. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs>